Hello, my name is Nick. Today we're going to talk about the flight preparation for airline pilots. Since we know our flight schedule and destinations, we can already start studying charts and specific details about the routes and airfields we will visit. Then comes the meeting with our crew. At the briefing room prior to the flight, we first print all necessary documents for the day. Those include the OFP as operational flight plan, which gathered all technical data for the flight. Please do not mistake this one with the field flight plan, which is more aimed at the traffic management and security, informing air traffic controllers about our intentions. With the OFP comes a full weather folder. In this one, we will pay particular attention to the forecast at departure, destination and between but also of alternate airfields which have been selected already. By the way, what we call alternate airfields are actually rescue airfield. They could be used, for instance, in case the main airfield would not be available for any region, like bad weather. In fact, if the weather forecast on the alternate airfield is worse than the one at destination, it would be wise to select another alternate airfield. To make it simple, this would be like having a punctured spare wheel. Rather useless, isn't it? The weather will also affect the runway in use and the surface condition. A dry, wet or covered by snow runway will not have the same result on the aircraft performance. Definitely not. We are dealing here with acceleration and braking capacity. Temperature and air pressure will also change our engine thrust and again acceleration and braking. Beside, the visibility will influence the different procedure in effect for departure and arrival. The en route weather is useful to know the areas that are need to be avoided because of thunderstorms or heavy turbulence. In such cases, we will expect to divert significantly from the scheduled route, which will take a time and a fuel cost. High altitude temperature and pressure and wind influence the optimum altitude. Those altitudes calculation can be done manually from Abacus. However, the UFP includes the pre-calculated ones. I will make you notice that the added values from the pilot is not to make mental calculation. We also get the NOTAMs, also called Notice to Airmen, which are publication about airfields and routes. These will inform us of any unavailable ground facilities or if an event might interfere with our flight. In some particular cases, we also get snow temps, giving us surface condition report of runway regarding snow. Finally, we get the aircraft status, as it may happen that some piece of equipment are out of order. Sometimes, it might be just one armrest missing from a passenger's seat, which you guess does not matter so much as piloting is concerned, but it can be important for cabin crew. Sometimes it could be a failed bubble, which could actually end up as a no-go. Or sometimes a wing part could be missing, yet without being a no-go. However, do not worry, we do have two documents called MEL for Minimum Equipment List and CDL for Configuration Deviation List. Those will confirm that if we can fly and precaution to be taken for every single equipment. As a summary, our briefing documents include the UFP, the weather folder, no temps, and MEL CDL. All of them together give us a pretty good idea of performances for takeoff and landing, constraints and obstacles to expect the alternate airfield situation. Knowing this, pilots may choose to add extra fuel to the minimum required fuel given by the UFP, which already includes some margins. Deciding the extra fuel is one of the mandatory objectives of this briefing, but think that taking too much fuel also means an extra financial cost. Added to the operational point of view, the flight folder will also provide the crew list as a mandatory rule and as a custom declaration, for instance. 
pilot's mutual briefing will be followed by another with the cabin crews. They will specify their own constraints, meal to have on board, affected duty, special passenger expected, etc. A deported, a wheelchair or an unaccompanied minor are all to be considered to estimate duration needed for boarding, for instance. If there is several flights today, this briefing will detail all of them, at least as far as information to our knowledge permit. And this is not all. For security and fatigue management, the ALO limits the maximum duty time, depending on the start time and the number of flights scheduled. It is of an importance to early detect if the daily program does not meet those requirements. Indeed, captains are not allowed to have their crew working beyond those limits. You can imagine that it would be quite annoying to realize after departure that we will not be authorized to fly the plane back for the next crew to take over. That's it. With all these inputs in mind, we can now get ourselves to the aircraft. I hope I did give you an interesting fact about our jobs. For now, please stay tuned. You can subscribe here and see you soon.